Hey everybody, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch Dr. Stone to see how accurate all the science and technology scenes in this TV show really are. The Earth is actually, like the rotation of the Earth is slightly changing every year and that's primarily because the Sun's gravity upon the Earth we're slowly moving towards the Sun a little bit every single year. Gravitational forces are really really strong even over great distances if the object has a high amount of mass. The equation for Newton's law of universal gravitation is F, which is your force, is equal to G, M1, M2, divided by R squared. In that equation, G is the gravitational constant, M1 is the mass of one object, M2 is the mass of the second object, and then the R squared is the distance between the two objects in question. Using that equation, you can calculate the force of gravity the moon has on the Earth. Because if, if you ever notice, the moon actually affects the Earth so much that during a full moon, the tides in the ocean are actually much greater, they're much more powerful. Because the moon is actually pulling on all the gravity of the earth, and the earth is pulling back on the moon. So the water is actually like pushing and pulling at much greater rates than it normally does. Senku is also kind of the amount of seconds that go by in a day, so he can like not just die in stone, he wants to like stay alive through this whole like petrification process. And he's doing a very good job of it, it's actually pretty impressive that he can count up to the number that he counted to. One day on Earth is not actually 24 hours, it's more like 23 hours and 56 minutes. And one like year on Earth isn't exactly 365 days, it's like 364 days and some hours. In the course of 3,700 years, I think that's how much time has passed, the amount of time in a one Earth day is not going to be 24 hours anymore. It's not going to be a, a huge difference, but it definitely will be. Like, I, I wonder if he's still going on a 24-hour clock. I mean, you probably could and it probably wouldn't make much of a difference. As the years go by, the days on Earth will get longer and the amount of, like, time, no, amount of days in a year will get shorter. <laughs> That sounds crazy, but humans did it. It's like it's it's one of those things that just makes me like always constantly amazed at what we've achieved. I mean, because the way he's living is how we started. Like somehow you took like rubbing like stones against each other to create a spark to now we're launching things into space. I've always questioned like how did we do it? <laughs> like how do you go from Stone Age to a Tesla? Like that, that, that's a, such a huge jump! The earliest technology was weapons technology, like spears and bows and arrows and axes, and then eventually you graduated to like MOSFETs and diodes and then transistors. This is it's a pretty like crazy concept, but your smartphone came out of the dirt. <laughs> like everything that's in your phone, like in the in this camera I'm using to record this video right now on my computer, like all of this stuff came from inside the earth. Someone had to like dig it up. They find like little bits of metal so they had to process all the dirt, get rid of all the impurities, and then just find like pure iron or nickel or like cobalt. I mean, whatever metal there is, they had to like separate that from the rest of the rocks they don't want. And somebody had to like melt it and then process it further. And then they had to shape it to make it a wire. Then some genius took some silicone and they used that to create an integrated circuit, which However they did that was pretty incredible. And then on top of that, you've got a guy who's like taking all this glass and he's like shaping it and then just putting it on the top of your iPhone lens or your smartphone lens in general. And then somebody goes ahead and drops it on the sidewalk and the screen cracks and now they're like, oh, the whole thing is useless. Like, it's like, to me, it's like I fully understand the amount of work that goes into like making one of these things. And I just can't believe, like some people just take it for complete granted, but like, understand that we started off having, like, nothing. Like, it, it's very difficult to imagine, like, just going out into, like, the woods with nothing. Like, no phone, not a knife. Like, there's nothing you have but your brain to survive. Like, it's amazing we made it this far. Engineers are responsible for taking all of that, like, dirt and all the metal and everything that you just find inside the earth. They have to take it out and then they're the ones that use that to create computers, 
and programming and cameras and zoom in lenses and all of this stuff is what engineers do and we're pretty awesome. That is really cool. Like, that's absolutely true, too. Like, the three things you need to have a fire are fuel, heat, and oxygen. The fuel that he has here is the cellulose that he's burning, which comes from the wood that from all, all the trees around him. The oxygen is plenty because that's in the air, like we're breathing it right now. And the heat he has is generated from friction. That, as you saw, he was like rubbing like those two pieces of wood together, which really, it, it, like, I don't know how long he was doing that, but it takes a very, very long time to produce even one spark. Just keep rubbing it, and rubbing it, and then eventually, through friction, you're gonna have a spark and fire. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I really hope you enjoyed this episode as I really like kind of went off on a rant about the things that engineers do and like the things that I'm amazed about. If you wanted to see more commentary, just let me know in the comments if you want to see more Dr. Stone or any other TV show or movie you wanted me to watch. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.